Hello again. Uh, we're doing a parabola here. Uh, y equals 3x squared plus 24x plus 50 is the equation. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to graph this. Um, a few things you have to know about this. If, uh, if it has an x squared, then you solve for y. If it has a y squared, then you solve for x. At least that's with our respective parabolas. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right here. And it actually involves a, a compilation of steps, uh, uh, ideas that you actually have to understand before you even do this problem, which is why can be very difficult for students. So I got y equals 3x squared plus 24x plus 50. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that there's just an x squared. I don't want a, a coefficient, a number in front of um, x, uh, or x squared I should say. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pull it out, uh, take the GCF of it. And I'm just going to take the GCF of these two terms. So y equals, now if I pull it out, I pull out a 30 and I have x squared plus now, if I pull out a 3 from 24x, what I have is 8x. Now, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to use completing the square in order to put it in vertex form, because that's what you always have to do if you want to put it in vertex form, if it's in this form right here, standard form. And that's going to be plus uh, some number, some mystical, magical number. And then I've got plus 50. And here's uh, something to consider. If I'm adding a number to an equation, it's going to offset the equation. So what I have to do is I have to subtract that same number on the same side in order to uh, put it back in place, put it back in balance. So I got y equals 3, quantity x squared plus 8x plus some number, uh, close uh, quantity plus 50 minus some number. Now in order to figure out this number, I'm going to use a completing the square technique. So what I do is I take this number 8, uh, that's the, it's always the number with the variable. Uh, if it were 8y, then it would be 8y. If it's 8x, it's 8x. And I'm going to divide it by 2. And that's what I do. Now, 8 divided by 2 comes out to 4. What I tell my students is put that in parentheses. Because the next thing you're going to do is square it. And then some students say, well, I don't want to put it in parentheses. I'm like, do it. Put it in parentheses because it's going to be a lot easier for you in the end. Trust me. So, then, okay. So, 4 squared equals 16. So, the number that I put into this blank spot is 16. Now, here's what students do automatically. They say, oh, I'm going to subtract 16. And bam, I'm done. Well, you're not actually adding 16. The students say, well, yeah, I am. 16's right there. No, you're not. You're adding 3 times 16. So what you have to do is subtract whatever 3 times 16 is, and that's 48. Yes. <laughs> y equals 3. Now, this uh, factors into two binomials, and that binomial is the same binomial over and over again. And what it turns out to be is x plus 4 squared. And, I mean, I knew that, but you don't actually necessarily even have to know that. Whatever the number is in parentheses, it's going to be the number that's accompanied with the x. So if this were a negative 3, it would be x minus 3 squared. If it were a 5, it would be x plus 5 squared. So on and so forth. Okay. Now what I have is 50 minus 48, which is 2. Do it in the same marker. And there you go. You've got the form of your parameter right here. y equals 3 times the quantity x plus 4 squared. Well, x plus 4 is the quantity squared times 3 plus 2. With this, I can kind of figure out what's going on. Uh, I know that it's going to open up, up or down because we're solving for y. And it opens up because the a term, the number in front of the quantity, is positive. Uh, it's going to be a sharp um, opening, too, because the number is bigger than 1. Uh, my vertex is going to be the opposite of this value here, so it's negative 4 and 2. So we'll start with that. And my axis of symmetry is x equals whatever this value is, uh, the first value in the vertex, which is negative 4. So bam, I got that stuff down too. Now let me just draw a really quick graph so you can kind of get an interpretation and understanding of what's going on here. So my vertex is there, and it opens up, and it's a sharp opening. So there we go. So I got my vertex, and my axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 4, or it's just at the vertex. How do I cut the graph in half? Bam! It's actually on negative 4. This one's a little off, so whatever the case. Uh, so I figured out my form, I figured out my vertex, figured out my axis of symmetry, my focus. 
Okay, my focus is that point that I was talking about, like if you were with a group of friends and you wanted them to listen to your like iPhone or iPod and everybody in the room had to hear it, if you put it like in a porcelain cup, a parabola, it magnifies the sound, or like on a satellite dish you place the microphone on the uh, focus because a satellite dish is uh, shaped like a parabola, etc. So the focus is going to be somewhere, and in this case it's going to be, it's going to be right there. It's going to be above the vertex, so my focus is, uh, is going to be my, uh, well first of all, it's going to be my H value. Mm. I don't even need that actually. It's going to be at negative 4, it's going to line up with the vertex, and then it's going to be whatever the K value is. Now the K value happens to be 2, so it's going to be 2 plus, and then the formula that I gave was uh, 1 over 40. Well, my A term is 3, so it's 2 plus 1 over 4 times 3, which is 1 12, so it's 2 and 1 12. So my focus is at negative 4 and 2 and 1 12, which comes out to uh, 25 twelfths if you're doing it as an improper fraction. If you want that as a decimal, 1 12 comes out to uh, 2.083 repeating. So my focus is here. So actually, that's a little too... Uh, Hi. My focus is there. Now my directrix is a line, and, and it's exactly the same distance from the vertex is to the focus, except it's on the opposite side. So if my, if my graph were facing down, my focus were here, my directrix would be above the graph. In this case, it's below the graph. And it's actually pretty easy to figure out what it is. It's a horizontal line, so my directrix trix, is y equals, and what it is is, it's, uh, it's my uh, k value subtracted by 1 over 4a. See, um, the vertex is the k value. Well, the y, at, the y point for the vertex is the k value. The focus is uh, an additional 1 over 4a. The directrix is going to be minus 1 over 4a. So that's going to be at uh, 2 minus 1 12 is... Um, 1 and 11 twelfths. Um, what is that? That's 92, that's 91, that's 1.916 repeating. Actually, then I have two. Very proud. Good for me. So my directrix is right here. And what's interesting about the directrix is uh, why do we have to find the directrix? Because I want to know how far the focus is from any particular point in the parabola. So if I want to figure out how far the focus is from here, I don't have to you know, use some kind of a uh, uh, Pythagorean theorem or some distance formula. All I've really got to do is take the directrix. If I want to find how far uh, uh, the focus is from the parabola, I don't have to you know, sit there and you know, do a formula. All i got to do is just take the directrix and this point and subtract them. I found my difference. Bam. Bam. Very easy. And the last part is the lattice rectum, which I said always seems to cause a laugh for some reason in class. Even I laugh from time to time. Just depends how I'm feeling. I'm having a good day, I usually laugh at my students. If not, I just move on really quickly and pretend that nothing was funny. And the lattice rectum is the length of the line uh, that crosses through the focus uh, to the parabola. So wherever the focus is, you draw a straight line, or it would be a vertical line if the graph were like this. And the length of that is 1 over the absolute value of 8, because when we're talking about distance, it's got to always be positive. Well, the a value is 3, so the length of the lattice rectum is 1 third. And that, that's the blue line right there. That's a, that's a, you know, a problem parabola, but I'd like to do a side one too. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, with that said, I hope that's helpful. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.